I'm so excited about this next guest. It is Assistant Professor of Education at Harvard Graduate School of Education, Anthony Abraham Jack. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon where you are, right? You're on the East Coast, so good afternoon. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. You wrote this amazing piece in the New York Times and it's about college and your undergraduate experience. And I just want you to break down a little bit about what your article was about because I think generally it was about the idea that getting to college and getting that tuition, your scholarship, getting the tuition taken care of, that that's not enough by far. And a lot of students need a lot more support. Can you break that down for me? Yeah, I mean, my main point is that access is not inclusion. People think that just because you have a financial aid package that covers most or all of your um, tuition, room and board, that's all that you need. Uh, I mean, the gaps between tuition and real life is real. I talk specifically about the fact that in the my first spring semester, I didn't realize that the dining halls were going to close. I didn't realize that the campus assumed that everyone left for fun in the sun during spring breaks and other recesses when if you didn't have the money to go home or like some of my peers didn't have a home to go to or who knew that home and harm were synonymous, you literally went hungry for 10 days. You scrounged for food. I worked extra hours in the gym um, to help pay to cover the cost of staying on campus which most people don't think about. They think about the cost of leaving to go to a beach or to um, you know, someplace fun where some of us literally face food insecurity. I remember walking around campus and you pass a dining hall, the lights would be out, the chairs would be on top, top of the table. And literally like you would have to just find something to eat. And there's that expectation. That's I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm just saying that there's that expectation that every kid every student there will be taken care of for an entire week. And that is wild. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, in some respects, I some consider people like at residential colleges fortunate because they only have these kind of breaks and basic needs like food and shelter um, during recesses. But this is a common reality for undergraduates, for students pursuing higher education all across the country. You know, estimates are as high as on average 40% of undergraduates in America are food insecure. Um, and the number is even higher at our community colleges and our state colleges. And so we actually need to understand that just because you get that, what I call that fat envelope in the, in the mail, right? That letter saying that you have been accepted. That's sometimes when the real struggle begins. Um, the, your basic needs are not necessarily calculated as part of your financial aid package. And we actually need to understand what that means. Uh, this is John Adarola. I, I wanted to ask you, uh, you talk about food insecurity, uh, the, the ways that like getting like, you know, financial aid doesn't necessarily close the whole gap. In terms of like outcomes, like what the students are then after all of this struggle throughout all the years of their college are gonna get out of it and what happens to them in their career, what are some of the consequences of this? See, the sad part is we don't quite know in higher education. Like we know what happens when kids are too hungry to learn in elementary, middle and high school. We fought to put free and reduced lunch into school so students wouldn't be too hungry to learn. We just assume that just because a student is in college that they don't face the very same problem that they faced three months before, that's actually not true. So newer research is being done now about the consequences of food and housing and security on college campuses, but it's not something that we have actually tracked or pay attention to in any kind of scholarly way until most um, recently. So what can be done? What can university leaders do at this point? What, as to start it, before we even have all the research, we know there's a problem. Yeah. What can be done and should be done, you know, in your opinion right now? I mean, 100% basic, meeting students' basic needs should be a priority for colleges and universities. Housing and food security should not be something that keeps someone from walking across the stage at graduation. Student, and with respect to food security, I think college and university must tailor it to their student body. And what I mean by that is a school like Harvard and Amherst should expand their dining hall policy so that there are no breaks in the, um, in the semester where students don't have access to basic needs, food and housing. Their residential campuses open the dining halls. But for campuses that are not residential or that are not um, 
where students aren't buying into the meal plan the same way. Food banks and food pantries can be partial solutions, but we need national solutions. We need prop, we need changes in access to SNAP, to different kind of institutional supports like food stamps and the like, so that students are again pursuing their degree without having the extra burden of finding where to where to eat or where to live. Well, I definitely think everyone watching this, if they want more information, they should read your article. I was a low income college student, classes weren't the hard part available on the New York Times. Anthony Abraham Jack, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.